Hi guys and welcome back to Creative Pet Keeping. My name is Kash, I am your host and today I'm going to show you my better breeding bullet journal for 20. 18 breeding plans. Now, as many of you know, I did spawn a pair of koi plaquette bettas last year in 2017, and it was an amazing experience. I got to document the entire journey on my YouTube channel, and I do have a playlist that you can check out that you can watch these little adorable babies grow up from tiny fry to adult fish. It's really great. But this year I want to step up my game and do a lot better because I would like to breed more spawns, become a better breeder, and one of the steps to becoming a better breeder is to document your spawns. A lot of people use different notebooks. I want to use the bullet journal approach and I want to share it with you as many of you guys also want to become better breeders of bettas as well. So let's get started. So let's take a look inside the Beta Breeding Journal. I already filled up the first page. And in here I focused on a summary of 2017. So the breeding pair that I originally started out with was Samurai and Sushi. And I wrote a little bit of information about them so I remember uh, what they look like and a little bonus information. So they are both short fin placans, placats. Uh, Samurai is actually a spade tail and he is a galaxy koi marble while Sushi was a more traditional koi female. The interesting thing about his eyes is that they were originally white but they became navy bluish blackish over time and Sushi's eyes remained white. Her colors were red cellophane black and with pink cheeks. His colors were red black cellophane blue with pink cheeks as well as iridescence and they're both of their origins was from Petco. Now I did note it here that he marbled to black and blue after a while so that he didn't maintain his koi coloration. And the female over time when she got a little older she did have an issue with her mouth where she had a hard time eating and that did probably cause her premature death unfortunately. So I, I made that note right here, and I also made the note that she did maintain her koi pattern. So unlike the male, she did not marble. What I also documented was their spawn date, which was 2-6-2017, as well as their spawn time. So they spawn from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Over time, if I can document spawn times for my fish, I can get a rough idea of what time my fish are more likely to spawn. So that's pretty cool. And another thing a lot of breeders will note is when their fish were free swimming. That refers to the fry. So when you have little baby bettas, usually they start out as little eggs in their bubble nest. And then when they hatch, they still have the egg yolk sac attached and they become these little bouncing babies. And usually that lasts about three days. And then they will free swim, but sometimes they... Uh, do it earlier, sometimes they do it later, and free swimming is when they start to swim around the tank. So I noted the date right here. Afterwards, I did my best to document everything. When you're working with a lot of fish, it's a little difficult to keep track, but I did write down how many males I have, how many females I had, uh, and then the calls as well as the natural deaths. Now the natural death is more of an estimate because I might have lost a couple here or there, but because I didn't see any bodies, I didn't note them. So this is the only the deaths of fish that I actually saw and removed the bodies. In regards to the colors from the entire spawn that I got, I predominantly had metallics, and then the metallics had either an aqua sheen, a purple sheen, and I had one that had a blue sheen. So that's kind of like predominantly the kind of color they reflected. I had Besides the most that were metallics, the second most I had was koi, and then the third was cellophanes. Now, with the koi, I actually thought that I had more cellophanes at the beginning, but a lot of the cellophanes over time became koi, and some did many months later, and I kind of noted this. And because I sold, uh, haven't sold my females yet, I mean, I sold a lot of females, but there are a couple that I still have, so I get to observe them over time. I noted that these females uh, were cellophane for a long time, and now they're actually starting to change their colors now, so that's kind of cool. I made a note of that. 
I had two blind albinos. These fish started to see over time, but uh, lost their vision. One died and one went to a home with someone who has experience with blind albinos. And then I also had one diamond eye male, and that is when uh, either fish have scales that cover the eyes or when they have too much pigment uh, that is in their eyes. Usually happens with metallics, and that kind of covers their eyes so they could still see through their eye, but not as well. And usually these are referred to as diamond eye or alien eye bettas. So this is kind of the basic first page that I have. It's not that fancy. I've never made a bullet journal before, so this is kind of what I did. And I try to color code it and make it visually interesting. And then the next page, I just started. So these are the January 2018 plants. I did write down my goals. I want to breed both placats and I want to try to get into long fin half moons as well. I want to try to produce more koi and I want to better document everything. So these are kind of my goals for now. I'll add more as I figure things out. And here I will be listing all my breeding pairs and I'm gonna start filling in the information when I decide which fish I would like to breed and when I set up my tanks. So that is so far what I have in my better breeding bullet journal. It's not a lot yet, but we still have a lot of room to fill this up. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you are breeding, I hope that you also decide to document uh, your breeding. It doesn't have to be in a fancy little notebook uh, like mine. You can also get a really tiny notebook. This is pretty nice too, where you can just write down your notes, or you can use a normal notebook that you can buy at the store, and you don't have to make this fancy or color-coded. Just jot down the different information that you gather from breeding your bettas, and trust me, down the line, this information will prove very, very useful when you are striving to become a better breeder. Well, thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on the future breeding projects of 2018 as well as the updates on the bullet journal.